first, uh, what do you feel has been China's uh, biggest achievement over the past five years? I think one of the great achievements since the ongoing reform in China has been lifting the material level and I would say the spiritual fulfillment of Chinese people. So now we get to the 19th Congress of the Communist Party of China mm -hmm. and it's built on the last five years. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that's happened is China has moved from what you might call a kind of it's always been important in the world, but it's been and more important regionally. But in the last five years, China has really moved towards the center of the global stage. I think uh, Xi Jinping in one of his early speeches in his first term uh, at a conference on diplomacy had the notable phrase, if I recall correctly, China will have more say and I believe he meant say in the world, and that meant in multilateral organizations. Uh, now China has a bigger vote in the IMF, uh, gaining a share of voice in the World Bank. Uh, China has played, made the uh, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization a more active international, um, I'll say, organization. Uh, China developed the Asia Infrastructure Bank. If I had to say big achievement, clear change over five years has to do with China's role in the world. What are the three words that you will use to describe China to your fellow Americans? China is a very complicated country. Mm -hmm. There are many different opinions and groups and localities and interests in China so that there are in a way many Chinas, not just one China. And so we need to deal with China knowing it's a complicated place, not a, a homogeneous place. That's right. I would say second of all, China has rising expectations. It's got about 18 or so, 19 percent of global GDP, and most countries think it will get a bigger share of global GDP. So in economic terms, what we have is a Chinese people that have made a lot of progress very fast. And they are proud of their ancient civilization. And they don't see themselves upsetting the world. They see, in a way, restoring the natural order of things, where China plays a big role. The final thing that I, if I was trying to explain to Americans is that leaders matter. I mean, look at the difference it made going from Mao to Deng. And I think we're seeing the rise of a leader in China that will make a big difference. And I think the, the 19th Party Congress will be looking to see what difference that is. Now, what do you think is the single biggest challenge China now is facing? And how do you feel the country can go about overcoming this challenge? I think China faces at least two really big problems. One is simply sustainable development. How is China going to improve the lives of its people continuously? So how do we materially improve the life of our people? And I would say how do we spiritually improve the life of our people too, but certainly materially improve it and yet preserve the environment and the resources that will continue to uh, support further growth. So how can Chinese people have more convenient transportation without creating lots of pollution in their cities, right? How can Chinese people have more material goods to consume without having so much garbage and polluting all the rivers, right? And the second big problem, I think, is that is as you modernize, people become more educated, they become, they have higher demands, they have more aspirations for life. Mm -hmm. They want to, in a way, have a greater control over their personal life. So I think the Chinese people of today are developing more desire to control their own future. Mm. So to me, the question is, how, what, 
how does the party maintain the necessary role of continuing stability? At the same time, it enlarges the ability of people to control their own destiny. With these challenges, what do you think are the solutions? Basically, I think it's going to be through innovation. The, the sustainability problems will have to be solved basically through a more uh, judicious use of resources, a more conservation, which I think technology, and China's moving ahead on a lot of clean energy technologies and so on. But I think we have to build societies to be innovative. And I think both Xi Jinping have talked about the need for innovative society and, and his predecessors, frankly, talked about it too. Uh, but how you build a society to be innovative, how you liberate people to, to think new thoughts, to think outside the box, to try ideas, to take risks. I think that, we, so we need a more risk-taking, in, um, innovative society. And so how you get that kind of society and still exert control, this is not so easy.